Uh, yes, hello everybody, can you hear me? Yes, okay, this is Lucia Caporaso. I'm chairing this session of the Algebraic and Complex Geometry session. It is my pleasure to introduce Ofer Gaber, who will speak on bounding the torsion in the Eladi cohomology of smooth projective varieties without unbound searches. Okay, thank you very much. So I thank the organizers for inviting me. So I will uh, uh, give a talk. Actually, the subject was uh, changed. It, I couldn't make enough progress on the previous one. So this is a much simpler uh, subject. So uh, um, it's uh, related to a theorem I proved uh, many years ago that uh, uh, if you have uh, a smooth projective variety over an algebraically closed field, then the Eladic uh, cohomology is torsion free for almost all L. Uh, so this was based, so the in characteristic zero, this follows from the comparison to integral cohomology over C, and uh, in characteristic P, one is to use uh, uh, somehow cut smashing argument with coefficients, but with coefficient FL and see that it works for uh, almost all L. Uh, and uh, now the, there is a, so there are questions about computability of a tal cohomology. In particular, there is a work by uh, Ogogozo and Mador. So, so in some sense, uh, a Turing machine can, can, if you give a datum of, of a, let's say, variety of a refinite field or a variety with a constructive shift, then a Turing machine can give the, the cohomology or the dimension of the cohomologies of uh, such. Uh, and uh, the, so the question is to effectively know the bound of the torsion. Uh, so, uh, so I want to prove the, so that there is a, an algorithm. So as in the title, without unbounded searches. So I, I will uh, comment on this. Uh, that uh, from X over the finite field, it gives an M bigger than zero that M kills all the torsion in H I X Z L. It is L different from the characteristic and I in uh, an integer. Uh, now, this is actually, uh, so without this thing in parentheses, uh, there is this paper of Poonen and two other quarters, I think Testa and another one, Van Luke, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. That, uh, so addresses this question, but kind of a stupid way, namely uses the result of Gogos and Madore to compute cohomology with coefficient in uh, Z mod L to then, in particular, one knows the structure is in a billion group. And one also knows uh, by using the zeta function and bounds for the betting numbers, for example, of cards, one knows the, one knows the, so using, one knows the betting numbers uh, for QL cohomology using the zeta function and bounds. And then one can uh, uh, give, uh, uh, somehow one can compute for any n the, 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 the kind of the structure of, uh, or the order of the L to the N torsion piece of the cohomology. And then you just do it for every N you, until the orders become the same. But you know from general theory, it must become the same at some point, but this is, uh, so it is in some sense a Turing machine, but we don't know when it stops. So it's not bounded by a concrete function. Now, so in all, uh, uh, so without unbounded searches is roughly equivalent Although it's not exact, so this is kind of in, it's an informal way, but more formally it should be what is known as a primitive recursive uh, function. So it's a, a, now this is something. So usually the the algorithms one can write down usually run in time, which is like exponential or double kind of multiple exponential time. So 
but however, in, in, uh, since I will describe things informally, I cannot verify primitive recursive formally, but it will be clear from the type of the arguments that I'm, uh, I mean, at least it will be uh, with unbounded searches in an informal way, which includes things like the Ackermann function is also with unbounded searches, but it's, uh, so I, do, I don't prove the actual formal logical uh, question about primitive recursive in, in what I will say. So uh, now the, uh, uh, so the beginning of this, so it's related to uh, something which was actually a letter for me to Buzzard. So it's about uh, a refinement of this, which is actually already mentioned in my paper, uh, where the, the torsion bound comes from uh, hard left shits, uh, I mean, doing hard left shits with coefficient ZL instead of QL coefficients. So the Lin proved, so for X, let's say, pure of dimension D, with an ample line bundle. So we have that uh, the hard left sheets map uh, or with QL is an isomorphism for all I. So I want to uh, refine this to um, uh, looking at uh, uh, so I want, so in particular with ZL coefficients, the co-kernel is torsion. I want to bound the co-kernel with ZL, ZL coefficients. Uh, so by some number, depending on x, which I will compute from equations defining x. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so of course, uh, there is a, 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 only the, the problem is just, uh, so I, I will work with essentially only with things defined over uh, uh, finite field or algebraic closure of finite field and uh, other fields of characteristic P are treated by specialization. I said characteristic zero is just topological. There is no, uh, the question is, uh, is clear by reduction to C. So uh, now, uh, so the main uh, tool, so there is a, a so when I have a hyperplane section, and by a fine cohomological dimension, this is zero for i bigger than d. Uh, so h in x is the hyperplane. So again, uh, also with ZL coefficient. And then uh, by uh, the universal, uh, uh, and then one gets that the compactly supported cohomology by duality and, and the coefficient sequence, this is torsion free. Since the, yes, you get the HD minus one Z model, which is dual to something which is zero, which is isomorphic. So then, uh, the weak left sheds for Z mod L coefficient will be that this is uh, isom for I bigger than D minus one and uh, let us say Ri and Rd minus one is injective is torsion free co kernel. And also the Giesin maps is an isom for i bigger than d minus one, and uh, say g i and g n minus one is surjective. 
So uh, now the the proof is by induction on uh, the dimension and like the point or curve curve, a curve case are easy uh, for a curve is just the degree of the line boundary which gives and then uh, uh, so the only the the middle hard left sheets map so of, uh, so notice that uh, if I if I have uh, uh, okay, maybe I will uh, this one is not uh, Okay. When once I have the uh, yeah, so if uh, uh, so if I, I have the the uh, so if I have the some NH that kills the torsion in the cohomology of a smooth hyperplane section, then uh, uh, NH times this, uh, maybe I have to call it M, can be taken as uh, NX. So, uh, so this is just uh, uh, the standard uh, duality for the torsion in cohomology, and uh, uh, so so most of, most of the torsion is controlled by uh, weak left sheds, and then the the somehow the torsion in uh, degree. D and D plus one, so for the D plus one, it's uh, controlled by the co-kernel and this, and this, uh, uh, and the torsion here, which is controlled by passing to, to lower dimension. Uh, so now, the, so to prove, uh, so the 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 uh, so I know in, in any case I have the H D minus one X going to. So, so this is injective with torsion-free co-kernel, and so the co-kernel of the hard left sheets map is a quotient. This is surjective. is a quotient of this co-kernel, which is torsion-free. So here, because it is torsion-free, I can use. Uh, um, so if I know the the characteristic polynomial of Frobenius, so the it uh, applying to Frobenius, it it. Uh, it kills the co-kernel here, and therefore it kills this co-kernel. Uh, so, uh, so let us. Uh, Uh, now, uh, so if uh, I have uh, so suppose everything is defined over some finite field, then uh, uh, the uh, this is zero on. So first on E tends of QL, then on E, and then on, uh, so this is like the, 
geometric for when the inverse of when is substitution relative to k zero. So notice that I, I can, I, I can, I will have to extend the ground field to have to have a smooth hyperplane section. I will use many of them to get different relations of these types of different. Uh, uh, So, so now the, the, there is a, a, so I can extend the field so that assume that there exists the so-called left sheet pencil, which is used in SGA7 in the Linz paper on the, the this, this first proof of Bell conjecture one. And so in the, in, in the Linz Veil two, there is some, uh, where it, where he proves hard left sheets that I mentioned, he also proved something which was called the GCD theorem, which was used by Katz Messing. So this, so I will need a, a slightly weaker form of the GCD theorem that uh, tells me, so in any case, there is some open, so there is a P1 in the dual project, so there is a kind of a line in the dual projective space, so a line parameterizing a left sheet pencil, and then the, those uh, co-kernels fit into um, uh, somehow the an irreducible uh, elladic sheaves, which uh, is uh, generated by uh, vanishing cycles, and this is studied, uh, I mean, it is a uh, uh, in, in, in particular, there are, re, there are uh, there is a shift on U, and then the geometric monodromy of this Ladic shift was uh, studied by Delin, where he, at least uh, uh, if you have odd dimensional H, so he proves it is open in some symplectic group, and in the even dimension, uh, it's either open in some orthogonal group and contains pregenerated by reflection, or it is essentially some A, D, or E type veil group. And then using case-by-case -case arguments, uh, he proves the GCD theorem. So in our, in our case, the, I will need a weaker uh, version, which is that there is no gamma such that, let's say in QL bar star, such that gamma to the degree of x is a root of uh, determinant t minus ff. So you think of x as a, as a point, as a closed point uh, of u. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this reduces to by Chibotarev, so it re reduces to the fact that in this monodromic group, geometric monodromic group, there is an element which doesn't have eigenvalue one. And in the Linz case, it's actually as, a, as he proves it in every corset. Uh, so he, there is the arithmetic monodromic, so there are no, no common eigenvalue for, C, for uh, yeah, I will, I will not need the, the stronger uh, result. So in any case, once you know this, you have certain polynomials that uh, have uh, G, GCD1. So any, anyway, uh, so the characteristic polynomial in this normalization so the P, F, let's say T to the degree X in, let us say, in Z, uh, T, uh, have uh, GCD1 in uh, QT, and then the ideal generated by them must contain uh, some uh, non-zero integer, which I can take as my m. 
Uh, so, uh, so now the problem is to render this. Uh, uh, so, of course, you can say that you check enough points until the GCD is one, but this is without bound on the time that it takes to for the algorithm. So, uh, so of course, one can try to use uh, uh, effective form of Chibotare, but here the problem is that the, we don't, uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure if there are results now, but uh, it, uh, there is no, I mean, one knows it's open, but one doesn't control the, the index, so one cannot... Uh, apply the easy, uh, I mean, the argument one first uh, could think of. So, uh, so the method that uh, uh, I will use is as follows. So I will be able to treat using a, a uniform subgroup of aliadic group, only the case of the symplectic group and not this case. But then I can I will reduce to this case, and then I will explain how I do the so the case of all dimensional H. So reduction to H of odd dimensions. So this um, so the middle commodity symplectic pairing. Uh, so actually. I will not uh, uh, be able to get this M for the, I mean, just uh, not for the GCD statement, but for the co-kernel of the hard left shits map statement. So I can uh, take the product of X with a curve, for example, an elliptic curve for every choice of a J invariant, I have some elliptic curve uh, defined over a field. So I... Uh, then I endow it with uh, a lamp a line bundle, let's say the one of degree. Would, so, so in any case, once you have a projective embedding of X and of E as a, let's say, as a cubic, so you get a projective embedding of X cross E, but this could be any curve also. So it's just as an example, an elliptic curve. So I, I want to uh, reduce from X to x cross c, so simply the, the, here I have the external product of, uh, so I have the, the c1 that I cap with is the direct, is the sum of the pullback of this c1 and the pullback of this c1. So I want to uh, uh, study uh, the co-kernel of this, but let us suppose that I can go one dimension. So for y, I have this, the corresponding hard left sheets map. So of course the cohomology of y is the tensor product of the cohomology of x is a graded thing. And the cohomology of c is the direct sum of the even and odd part, and the, you can just restrict yourself to the even part, which is direct sum and, and then it doesn't, the, the hard left sheet map preserves this. So the, and then I think that uh, the, uh, okay. Uh, Let me see, I have uh, uh, so uh, maybe I have a uh, uh, oh no, excuse me. I used the odd, uh, uh, no, I got it completely, uh, I got it complete. So uh, I use uh, 
So I use the, the cohomology of X tensor H1 of C lies in the cohomology of Y. Okay, this is, so is a direct sum and is, and now the hard left shits map here restricts to the hard left shits map here tensor H1C. And so uh, by, so visibly the co-kernel for X is a direct sum and of the co-kernel for Y. So I have just to, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I can assume that uh, I am uh, working uh, in the case of uh, left sheets pencil with odd fiber dimension. So now to get information on the monodromy group, I will recall some basic thing in L.A. Dickley group. So how much time do, ah, uh, 20. ah 20, ah, okay, so it's okay. So this will be okay. So I have a uniform, uh, no, uniform uh, pro L group. Uh, so this is something defined in some books. Uh, uh, so essentially, the, the, those are uh, parallel groups which are uh, torsion free. So it's they're kind of uh, they form uh, actually analytic. They are analytic as a kind of a group law in uh, on Z L to the D defined by power series with some convergence properties. But so the uniform. Uh, so actually, I will not give the definition, but an equivalent characterization. So there is an equivalence of category between uniform pro L groups and uh, ZL Lie algebras L free, so free of finite type, so that the commutator map lies in L to the E L, where E is one for L odd and E is two for L even. So when you start from such a Lie algebra, you can form formally the exponential with the baker campbell the formula used to define the group law. And uh, then, uh, so, uh, so, for example, I have in GLN ZL the, the, okay, the matrices congruent to one modulo L to the I, where I is bigger than or equal to E. Uh, this is uniform. And then uh, also for every algebraic subgroup, not necessarily, so in a, I mean, the algebraic subgroup of GLN over QP, ZQL, not necessarily, I don't assume anything, I mean, I don't assume connected or good reduction. So uh, they take that the points in this algebraic subgroup satisfying the same condition for the ambient group, and then one can check it is uniform. Uh, now the, uh, I will, uh, so, uh, so roughly, like if you're an algebraic group, uh, you, once you have this congruence condition, you know that the, the thing, when you apply L to the nth power, gets tends to the identity, so, and it is the exponential of something. When it, so locally near the identity, you know the group is, is related by the local theory to Lie algebra. And then you get that every element is exponential of something in the Lie algebra, the algebraic group, and, and uh, converses something in the Lie algebra, which satisfies the con, which is, lies in this, in the, which is divisible by L to the E or in the Lie algebra of GLN, 
when you exponentiate it must lie in algebraic group just because it gives a, you have a, a rigid analytic map from some disk to which uh, is uh, near zero in the algebraic group so it must be everywhere in the algebraic group so I will uh, uh, now so in particular the symplectic group I'm interested in is for this type so now um, uh, so actually we need the, the, an estimate of the following type that uh, given a, a closed subgroup of GLN ZL then there exists H prime an open subgroup so it, well H prime let's say in H tensor uh, intersection gamma uh, let us call this uh, uh, gamma i so let us say gamma e to make it small enough uh, so that h prime is uniform and the index is bounded by some explicit function of the data like maybe n and l So for this, uh, again, I know by general thing that H, uh, I can assume that uh, H is containing gamma E. Uh, and so, uh, and uh, gamma E is the exponential of uh, uh, like L to the E, uh, the algebra of GLN. And uh, anyway, near one, uh, H is like the exponential of some Lie algebra. But then I can uh, form a, a So now, so there is a logarithm map from H to the Lie algebra of uh, GLN, but then I can uh, compute it by raising, uh, so log G is one over L to the N, log G to the L to the N. I can make an element close to the identity. So I know that the log goes from H to Lie H. So let's say H is some exponential of some R, where R is open and compact in Li H. And we, we can have the ZL span of R. So considering the uniform thing, so I, I did not, uh, uh, so if uh, another property is that if I have uh, a basis, EI of L, then uh, you have uh, the product of exponential TI EI gives an isomorphism from ZL to the D to, to exponential L. And uh, this is an analytic isomorphism and it, uh, in and it preserves the normalized R measure on both and also the exponential map preserves the R measure. And now, uh, so uh, the argument is, uh, so if I have G of H, then G acts uh, by conjugation on R and therefore on R. But in any case, we know that this is a prior situation, so the action uh, is a, uh, uh, G acts on R mod L unipotently. 
So in particular, G minus one is the dimension on this is zero. So now, uh, suppose that I have, uh, so, in, so let's say I have G to the L to the, uh, let's say H is some power such that H to the L acts trivially on R mod L. So then the log uh, we using the series for log which converges, but here I mean the action of H on, on uh, some. Uh, so one can see that if you know that the L's power is divisible by L, you get that all the terms of the series are integral. And so the log of the action of H preserves uh, this R. So in this way, I get some power of L such that uh, the Lie bracket so I get some m so that L to the m r uh, times preserves by Lie bracket r. And this means that L to the m r is a Lie algebra. And then by increasing m, it will verify the condition that I need uh, for uh, uh, in the alternative description of uniform uh, Eladic groups. So for some computable M, we have a uniform L add the group uh, X of L to the M R inside GLN well ZL and now uh, but this uh, is uh, generated by, uh, actually topologically generated by things which uh, lies, uh, because I take uh, generators for, uh, basis for this ZL model comes from, coming from element of R, and then by construction, you get topological generators which actually lie in the group I started with, which correspond to X of some set R, uh, which is contained in the span of R. Now, for the calculation of the index, it's enough to, to work with measures, and then you can say that the index is, uh, at most, the ratio of this measure to this measure, which is, again, some explicit power of L. So I prove this statement, and then, uh, Yes, yeah, so now for the uh, final thing, uh, I need uh, uh, yeah, so I have, I have my parameter space of a Lefschetz pencil, so it gives a representation to some GSP 
QL of the arithmetic fundamental group. And uh, I want to uh, uh, get a, 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 so I want to exclude that gamma to dx is a root of px for x closed point. So I have to, I want to find a, a finite set of closed points as that for every gamma, this is not a, a root. So I take one closed point, then I have some, a, um, I compute px and I get a finite number of possibilities for gamma, which are elastic units that I have to, to exclude. And then for each of them, I have to find other points where this is not. Uh, uh, so now, uh, the, so in any case, uh, just uh, uh, because of the Pfaffian, I know that, uh, so if the Betty number is, in any case, the, the uh, So I have the, the I have the determinant of the representation which essentially give, uh, 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 captures the information in a degree by taking logarithm up to some. Uh, so the the thing I want to exclude. So I want to exclude something that after taking logarithms. I want to exclude uh, some relation of the form determinant log. Rho f x. So anyway, something expressed in terms of the image. You take the 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 log is defined everywhere, but uh, so you you have the uh, uh, so in any case, I have some uh, polynomial function on. Uh, so actually, I restrict myself to a neighborhood of zero, which comes from the uniform group. I I, and I use the, the coordinates coming from the exponential map. And then I get a polynomial function. Actually, this is not integer coefficient. In any case, I, get, I have a polynomial function with some degree. And, uh, and then I refer to result of, a result of Osterle around in the 80s, which bounds for an analytic set in Z to the L to the D. Actually, it does it for, for a rigid analytic set. Let's say something defined by a restricted power series, which is not zero modulo L, in terms of the degree mod L, you get bound for the uh, mod L to the N, bound for the size of the mod L to the N reductions, so in terms of the degree. So finally, uh, using this, I can control uh, kind of which power of L. So for this uniform piece, I get uh, that the image, that the bed set modulo some power of L, I know a bound of the size. Uh, and so I, uh, uh, okay, and then, then I have, since, since then in this situation, I have uh, over you, uh, I have uh, my, uh, so I have my group modulo my uh, uniform subgroup, and then modulo this a smaller subgroup, and this gives me a, a tame cover so I can control the genus. And so essentially, the, for effective Chivotar review, reduce from uh, finding x was counting the number of x over a given finite field, which given this to counting uh, points in twists of this uh, curve. And then one can use valid estimate to, to get information on the number of points, in particular that it is not zero uh, in, a, in a concrete way, because the, the tameness allows one to, to bound the genus by by Riemann Wurwitz. So, uh, anyway, so this is a sketch of the of the argument. <laughs>